So in this video, we're going to give a brief introduction to everything that special districts need to know about online compliance in California. This is focused on some recent and some existing bills that have passed. And there's a lot of confusion out there amongst the people we talk to, even some of our clients, about what actually has to be posted to a website. And now that 99 has passed and districts are required to have websites, it's even a bigger issue. And so we wanted to record this video to share with you so that you could understand a little more about what's required and how easy it actually can be. We're not a big fan of state mandates, but um, they're not as bad as they might seem. So um, just a little bit about us. So uh, the person you're hearing right now, that's me um, laughing so hard I'm falling off the stool. Streamline has been around for a while. We've got a lot of districts using our website tool. We've got a lot of agencies using our free compliance tools, one of which we'll talk about because regardless of what else you do with us, um, you wanna make sure you get this one catalog published so we can help with that. Digital Deployment is our parent company, been around 14 years, lots of websites. We've been doing this a long time, and we really care about helping keep local government compliant online and safe and make it easy. So it might feel a little overwhelming when you think about all the things you have to have on a website in California, especially if you haven't already had one, and especially now with 929 having passed saying you have to have one. So, um, and we'll talk about that in, in a little more detail, but I wanted to note how much of this you're already doing. You know, even if you don't have a website, you already have to be posting your enterprise system catalog and keep it available wherever you meet. We'll talk more about that. If you have a website, you have to post to the website. You already have to post your agendas in advance, however you're doing that. You already have to do the state controllers reports that are required. And so, you know, the formatting requirements are in addition, and there's a few other things in here. We're going to go over all of this in this video, kind of touch on all of them, and then show you how easy it can be. So the reason we're starting to see these things, there are more and more items getting tucked into the PRA and into the Brown Act, is because those are the two places the state legislature can put additional mandates and you can't get reimbursed for them. The state will not reimburse. So it's getting a little interesting to see the things that are a little bit of a stretch that are getting put into these bills. But um, the Public Records Act, you know, everybody in California must know about this, um, allowing people to inspect your documents. And um, it's pretty long and intense. Um, but there are a couple of new things. This is where they tucked 929, which is the requirement for all districts to have a website. Like I said, it's a little bit of a stretch. It's also where they tucked SB 272, which is the enterprise system catalog we're going to talk about. And I'm going to briefly touch on another optional one that I actually am really a big fan of. So we'll talk about all of these. Start with SB 272. Um, this was required by July of 2016. So if you haven't already done this, the good news is we have a tool for it, it's free, and I'll show you how to find it, and um, you can always reach out for help as well. Basically, they want you to catalog any computer systems you have that meet certain criteria, and then make it publicly available and then post it to your website. Now note that when we say prominent location, I do not suggest you put a link to this on your homepage. I don't think the public cares so much about it, um, but if you have a governance page or you know a transparency page or something like that, that's a good spot. Again, I'll show you our free tool towards the end of the video on this. SB 99, so this is the recent bill that is going to require all special districts to have a website by January 2020. Now you can adopt a hardship resolution in a meeting annually. So let's say um, you, know, you have no staff, you have no internet access, um, or you have very little money, uh, which isn't really a good reason because our platform is so cheap, which we'll look at that too. But anyway, you can adopt a hardship. But if you aren't going to adopt a hardship, then it's good to understand what it is you need to post to your website. Now, I talked to a lot of people who have claimed they want to claim a hardship strictly because they think this is going to be so hard. Hopefully, after you watch this video, you realize that it's not that hard. AB 2853, so this isn't actually so new anymore. I like to touch on this. This is completely optional. But one of the bonuses of having a website now is that because of this new bill, if you post things that people ask for during PRA requests, you can point to the website instead of making photocopies and mailing them or meeting people at the front counter 
or all of the things you might be doing now, you could instead say, hey, all of that stuff is posted right here on our website. Here's a link. Maybe save you some time and money. At least I'm hopeful. This is just an example of how we suggest, you know, you put the records up that people might be asking for, make it clear, here's how you can make requests, put a form right on your website, that way they can send it right to you. And if they filled the form out on the website, pretty hard to claim they don't have access to the internet. So you can just send it back as a link. Okay, and then now on to the Brown Act. Our lovely, lovely Brown Act. So you're all, I'm sure, familiar with the agenda posting requirements around your final agendas. Um, 72 hours in advance, that's been going on for a long time. Um, if you have a website, they do also have to be posted to your website in that same time frame. I'm gonna show you again how easy this can be, or you just set yourself a reminder. The new homepage agenda, this all went into effect in January of this year. So it's been happening for a couple of months now. Um, 2257 requires that you have a link directly to that most recent agenda right on your homepage. So it can't link to another page that has agendas. It can't link to a page of meetings that have agendas attached. Sadly, it needs to link right to that agenda. I'll show you a little later how we're solving this problem, um, but you can do it you know, manually depending on who you're using for a vendor. Make sure that they've got that link on your homepage. The other thing to note is that it needs to be electronically searchable, retrievable, and platform independent. What that means, this is very important, you cannot anymore print your agenda from Word to the printer, then put it in with the pile of stuff for your packet and scan it back into an image-based PDF. That technically is not compliant. So we strongly suggest that you keep your agenda separate from the packet, you can also include it in the packet if you want, that's fine. But make sure you have something that is called your quote unquote agenda, your one or two page document, create it in Word, save or export to PDF from Word instead of printing it. Make the PDF right from Word, that's text-based and independent of platforms like Word. So then that actually fits this. You don't wanna post your Word document, so really important to do this. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can always follow up with us. I've got some great tip sheets on how to do this. It's not that hard, it really isn't that hard. It's just a matter of maybe changing your processes. Um, here's a quick little tip. Um, depending on your version of Office, you save as type, and then it allows you to save it as a PDF. They also call it XPS, which is fine. And as long as um, you save it that way, then that is what you will call your agenda. And then again, you can, Print it out also, put it on the pile, and call your packet your agenda packet. That's fine. AB 2257 only applies to the agenda itself, not to the minutes, not to the agenda packet. So don't ever want to scare anybody with that. A couple other really easy, um, not easy necessarily to do the reports, but easy to post. So your two reports that hopefully you're already doing these, these are required. You have to fill these out every year, send them off to the state controller. You also need to post them to your website or you can link to the state controller's public pay website. Now we suggest that you do that if possible because the nice thing about that is that you don't have to update it every year. You still have to do the report every year, but at least you're not updating your website when you don't need to, causing more work. And this is ditto with the financial transaction report. Managed the exact same way. It goes off to the state controllers. They post it to this website called bythenumbers.ca.gov. So there's no real reason that you need to also post it. Just make sure that you link over to that website. Okay, some other considerations. Two of these um, in terms of formatting. So in California in particular, years ago they passed something called AB 169 trying to define what open data means. Now, I suggest that you just don't ever call anything open data because these guidelines are very, very vague. Um, the text literally says it needs to be searchable, indexable, this, that, among other things. And nowhere does it define what those other things are. So I just strongly suggest that you just don't use the term open data on anything and then you're fine. So that one's an easy one. Just something to avoid. Now, Section 508, which is actually federal, California has adopted these standards. Um, this part is the part that gets a little dicey if you're not using a compliant platform like ours, um, or you know, there are a few others. 
Section 508 is kind of designed so that people with disabilities can still navigate the web using assistive technology. And so it has a lot to do with the way your site navigation works and whether or not somebody can use a keyboard to get from one spot to the next. Um, color contrast, font sizes, alternate text on images, all sorts of stuff. Um, the guidelines got a little more stringent at the beginning of 2018, so a year ago. So if you're not using Streamline, then you should reach out to your website vendor and make sure that they're testing it and that it is compliant with Section 508. So back to our list, just this is the same list that was at the beginning, but I like to wrap up with this. So here are the requirements. And um, if you're watching this video and you haven't already gotten our handout, we've got a handout that actually lists these all out in a really easy to understand format. So, um, you know, follow up with us and we'd be happy to give that to you if you don't have it already. Um, but these are the requirements. We've got a couple of things under the PRA, a couple of things under the Brown Act, two things for the state controllers, and then two formatting requirements. Kind of interesting, it's like all in twos. Um, I hadn't noticed that until just now. So those are the requirements. And now we are gonna go on to just spend a few minutes showing you just how easy it can be to meet these requirements. And I'm gonna start by just showing our website tool because this is what we've built specifically so that California agencies can be compliant with all of the things I just talked about. And I just wanna show you briefly how easy it is. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna sign in. And I'm just signing into this demo site that I have right here. And you know, a streamlined site is nice because you can manage all of this. You can customize your home page, you can customize your menus and your navigation and all that stuff. But what I wanna show you today is how easy it is to manage the transparency related stuff that you just have to do. So we're gonna go straight up to dashboards on the left. And the first one is our meeting dashboard. So I've pre-populated this with some stuff so that you don't have to watch me click around too much. But the first thing to note is adding a new meeting is about as easy as clicking save. The system learns your schedule. And of course you could change the date if you wanted to, but the system learns your schedule. We're trying to make this super, super simple. You'll notice that we have a spot for agendas, a spot for minutes, and a spot for supporting documents. Again, keep that agenda separate from the packet. So the packet would go in supporting documents. The agendas are tracking the Brown Act deadline. It'll give you a red light if you've missed it. And then you also can just click on the button, go upload your file. I'll just grab this one right now so you don't have to watch me struggle to find files. And just like that, you're up, you're compliant. You can also set an agenda reminder however far in advance of that Brown Act deadline when you'd like to get your board secretary to get an email in the inbox that says, hey, click here to go upload your agenda, it's time. So that's pretty nice too. Now, the other thing is you do this on the back end, you manage your meetings here, and automatically on your home page, you get these board meetings, so it's always a separate group, so you can have additional committees, you can have all kinds of things that will be separate. But that bill requiring your agendas actually applies to your governing board. So you'll see that we've got the meetings and if the agendas are available, they're right here. If they aren't, this button will link to the most current agenda because that's what's required by law. So you don't have to do any of this, it happens automatically. A meetings page is created automatically and you'll see when you go to your board group, you'll see the agendas, the minutes, if I had any packets, they would be in here as well. So that's all designed to happen automatically. And then the other thing is when it comes to all those other requirements we just talked about, that's here in the second tab under transparency. And there's lots of cool stuff you can do around transparency. You know, you can put up your budget, your audits, um, all this different stuff. But what we're interested in for the purposes of this video is this little, excuse me, this little checkbox right here that says show only the state of California requirements. Now we see we have four checkboxes. As of 2020, there will be another checkbox for your contact information, which gets put in automatically as we set up your site. But for now, you've got four. So if I click on this, here is that enterprise system catalog I talked about. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit for just a short period of time about how you can create that if you haven't already. But let's just pretend you have already created that, which you have to do whether or not you have a website. 
So I'll click add new and I happen to know that I have this. So here we go, click on that. There we go, now I've got a green light. So that's done. If I look under board of directors, this is just looking for those agendas, which we just put up, we're on with the brown X, so that's all green, we're all set. And the last two are board member and staff compensation and financial transaction report. And as I told you a few minutes ago, we can make this super easy. Anywhere you see from template, you click right on that template. It has a link right out here. I save and close. Do the same thing on the financial transaction report and I save and close. And now I am completely compliant with the state of California requirements, just like that. It, it literally is that simple. So that's what we're here to do. Um, and if you do decide you wanna take it to the next level and you're a part of um, CSDA, the California Special District Association, you want to get the um, Leadership Foundations Transparency Certificate, of course, you can uncheck this and you can look. There's a lot of other stuff that you can put in here. And anywhere that they have policies, we put those in so you can just click them and create them on the fly. So that's just kind of an additional bonus. But to get back to just the requirements, you have a transparency page built in on your site. And anything that you post in that dashboard we just talked about gets linked here. So if somebody is looking to see, have you posted your enterprise system catalog? Well, yes, we have, it's right here. Something to note about the enterprise system catalog is we're gonna segue into that for just a few minutes. If I click on this, you'll see that I have published a catalog that has a date and says we have no systems to declare. So the thing about SB 272 and this silly enterprise system catalog is that you don't have a choice. You have to publish this, even if you do not have a computer. And I actually have districts like that who don't even use computers, doesn't matter. So you can just say we have nothing to declare, but it has to be updated annually. So you want to make sure you date it and then put a reminder to update it the next year. Now for our next few minutes together, I just want to show you how to get to our free catalog tool in case you have not created yours and you'd like our help with it. That's exactly what we built this tool for. So if you come to our site, you're going to look for the SB272 system catalog link. And you can click right on the button at the top if you want to, and it'll jump right down to the bottom. Or you can read more about 272. Um, I like to point out here that there are FAQs from a bunch of webinars we did back in 2016, trying to get people to get this done. So there are, you know, well, do I need to include Word? Why do I need to include Excel? What if I have a question about, what about if I, how you use a contractor? What about if the county processes our bills? Do we need to list their software? That's all here in the FAQs. So any, I like to point that out. And you can watch a nice video of Dylan over at CSDA who helped us create this tool to help with the compliance. But down here at the bottom, on the left, you put in, if you wanna use our free tool, you put in your agency name, you pick your URL, which typically will be the acronym for your district, because this will be your permanent URL for this catalog. So don't put something silly in there. You want it to be, you know, Acme Mud or AMUD dot system catalog dot net or something like that. And then your contact information, just in case you need our help, but we need to reach out to you. And then your login information, which will be your email address and password. Now, once you create it, you can always come back here to sign into it as well, which is nice. Um, I'll go sign in here and just going to take a minute or two, maybe two minutes to show you quickly how this works. Now, if you have additional questions, we really encourage you to reach out. We'd love to help, but you will come in and what you will do is on the left side, you will inventory all of your computer systems. And if you take the time to just read through any of the help text in here, it'll kind of make sense, even though the bill is very confusing. So you'll add systems over here, and as you add them, it will walk you through yes or no questions. So I'll just click on one of these and I'll go to edit so I can show you what it looks like. It's gonna ask you questions like this, and then as you go through, does it do this, does it do that? This is how it's trying to define whether or not you need to include it in your catalog, you say continue. There's always the law text down here at the bottom, right? So anyway, you just go through these questions and there are, a handful of them and we have some tips that we created in conjunction with some attorneys on how you might answer these you go through and you try to figure out does it contain information about the public 
Once you finish that, you'll have a list over here on the left of the systems that do need to be included. And then it will also save the systems that do not need to be included down here at the bottom. So um, those are gonna just stay there because you do have to update this every year and we don't want you to have to go back and try and remember, what well, did we look at our GPS system? Was that exempt? We can't remember. So we put all those down here. And then when you're done, you publish a catalog over here. You add a catalog revision. Now, every time you add a new catalog revision, it will publish at the exact same URL. That's why I said that's so important when you choose it. It'll list everything the state says you have to list. And you just add that URL as a link to your website, whether you're on a streamlined website or something else, doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it matters. You'd be happier probably if you were with us, but, but you can add this to your website and then you're compliant with SB 272. So I didn't want to spend too much time on that just in case you're somebody who's already done that. Um, again, if you need to reach us, um, reply to whatever email you may have gotten, you can always go to our website and there's our phone number. Um, I am Sloan at GetStreamline.com. That's S-L-O-A-N-E if you need me. Otherwise, um, reach out if there's anything that we can do, and we will be happy to help.